Overdrive continues, brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line of the final score. Brian Hayes, Dave Festchuk of the Toronto Star. The Friday at Jays Cubs tonight. At the FedEx Cup playoffs continuing. You've got um, Elon Musk trying to instigate a fight with Mark Zuckerberg. Cage fight? Yeah, so like Musk on Twitter today tweets out that it's going to happen and that proceeds are going to charity and veterans and he's spoken with the Prime Minister of Italy and it's going to happen somewhere in Rome and everyone's assuming that means the Colosseum. And I guess uh, Zuckerberg has responded on threads Mm -hmm. that uh, he's not really feeling it. I guess he wants it to be a UFC sanctioned event. But if this ever does happen, and I'm not convinced it actually will, but if it were to happen, you'd have to believe it would be the most viewed fight in history Yeah, because of the platforms these two guys control. Right. So it can be everywhere on Twitter, everywhere on Facebook, everywhere on Instagram. It would find a way to get on TikTok. Like the only thing they don't own is TikTok. That's Chinese. Uh, Yeah, but everyone's on TikTok around the world. But these guys own basically everything in terms of platforming on your phone. And if you're not going to watch it live, I don't think you could escape it. Seeing it somewhere. No. A clip of it somewhere within the, you know, two or three days following the fight. Like, I legitimately think you're talking billions and billions of views because I don't think you can run with it. You you couldn't get away from it even if you wanted to if Musk ends up fighting Zuckerberg. Now, how much money they can generate, I don't know. I don't know either. Like, I'm not paying to see the fight. That's the question. Who's going to actually pay to see it? No one wants to pay rich guys to see them fight. No. That's another thing. They're both villains. Like, everyone would be rooting for both of them to get probably clocked. I don't see where the money's coming from because he's talking about streaming it on X or Twitter, whatever he's called. For free. For free. So we're, I guess there's ads involved in that, but. Well, that's I don't know. probably where they'd make their money. Yes. Because it, like, a lot of companies would say, we'll get involved here if we believe billions of people are going right. to watch on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. So they would be able to generate money that way. But How honest just, will they be with it? I don't know. We're just so used to the, you know, you got to pay 50 bucks to watch this fight. Yeah, exactly. The pay per view culture that we've grown up in. So this free streaming on my. X app and then free streaming on the Threads app. I mean, I don't know how that's going to work. No, I'm not sure either because technically they're in competition. And here's the other thing. Like, it's fun. Like, it's like when they had these celebrity golf matches. Watch watch these quarterbacks play golf. Watch Steph Curry play golf. It's fun for a few minutes, and then you realize, yeah, they're not. Like, Tom Brady's a great quarterback, but he's just an okay golfer, and it's not that much fun watching oh, no. okay golfers golf. And it's not okay. Like, it might be fun watching two guys fight, but if they're not very good fighters, well, I don't the, know. The technique will be terrible. Yeah. These guys are the, like, two of the more unathletic looking humans on earth. I'm saying it's not like they're both specimens. No. And I don't care if Zuckerberg is, you know, fancies himself a part of the MMA community because he takes pictures with people. He goes people. to lessons. He goes to lessons. It doesn't matter. Zuckerberg's, he's a small guy. Musk is a lot bigger than him, but Musk. I don't think Musk has an athletic bone in his body either. That's the thing. But what you're dealing with here is a complete lack of self-awareness. Like the idea of this actually come to fruition, because I, I think the way this would work is both guy would both guys would think the other guy is the nerd. Right. Without any oh, self-awareness that you're both the nerds you're both and you're nerds. both likely soft as butter. But I think Musk is probably like, oh, this guy's a nerd and soft. And Zuckerberg's probably like, this guy's a nerd and soft. Well, that's my And I'm going to pummel him. Like, but they, like, do, do either of these guys have any track record of ever no. being in a fight? Exactly. How many times have either guy been punched in the face or yeah. thrown a punch? I don't know. Like, the, the technique would be terrible. But, again, you're dealing with two villains, ostensibly. I mean, yeah. most people don't like these two guys. So you're dealing with villain versus villain, which can be difficult to promote. But fighting is different than golfing or tennis or pickleball like a fight is very difficult for people to look away that's true you know that's like true. there's there's if obviously it's good like if it, mma can if be it's pretty not. boring because it, it turns into a guy getting a guy in a headlock and then yeah. just kind of giving him noogies but that's you know because I mean? they're they're trying to win the fight right that's because they're they're trying to win over judges or they're trying to protect themselves you you put two guys that don't really know how to fight and then tell them they have to learn how to fight, and then tell them to activate those fighting skills. Who the hell knows what you're getting? That's get? true. And if if one guy gets popped in the face and doesn't know how to respond to it, that could actually be really funny. 
but I don't know. Like fighting is different. Like we're dealing with it in sports. We saw the the uh, news come out of Quebec. The uh, major uh, yeah. Quebec Major Junior Hockey League has decided to ban fighting. Where I think they're expecting it will still happen, but it's an automatic, automatic game right. suspension and and possibly even more discipline beyond that. It's just a matter of time. And, and there is more sensitivity and a different approach to it when you're talking about junior players, non-professionals, sure. teenagers. But if a fight happens in hockey, people are watching. Of course they're. Like, I don't care what anyone says. I don't care the soap pop, soap box you're on. If a fight breaks out, you're going to check it out. No, people, it's just, it's, people, it's human I nature. I mean, look, people that grew up in the era we grew up in, most of them miss they miss the fights. They miss the good fights. And, like the spontaneous nature yeah. of a fight and the buildup within the rink when you're like, it's getting crazy here. Something's right. going to happen. There's a lot of energy that comes with that. Oh. Like you okay. can't find that very uh, very many yeah. other places. Uh, heavyweight fight energy is, yes. is the all-time energy. It's a different buzz in the building. That is for sure. Jay's Cubs tonight. He is former MLB pitcher, intentional talk host on MLB Network, good Canadian boy Ryan Dempster. What's happening, Ryan? Howdy. How we doing? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? Well, we're talking Elon Musk fighting Mark Zuckerberg, so we're doing very well. Um, is that a yeah, fight you'd be interested be in? Draw. Are you interested Could in that fight? Less. No? Could care less. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure, you know, it'll be, I, I'm just, I just, yeah. Okay. Not really that. I'm not, I'm not really, I, I'm a throwback to like, I love the Holy Field, you know, Mike Tyson, Lennox Lewis days, like that's, I, I don't watch a lot of lighter weight boxing or anything like that or MMA fights unless they're bangers. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to take a hard pass on that one. Okay. All right. I like to hear that. Uh, that's that's good. To, that's good to know that there are people out there that are not interested in these two behemoths of the tech world actually getting into a fight. They don't really care. So how close did you come to a to a to a pitching mound brawl, Ryan? Uh, as a pitcher, never. I never really had anybody even like jaw out at the mound. Mind you, I never, you know, had any many reasons to do that. Got in a few of those skirmishes as teammates, though. Those are fun. You know, like the, the Paul Wilson. Uh, I was with the Reds when Kyle Farnsworth charged Paul Wilson, like the reverse charge. The pitcher charged the hitter. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, he gave him the gold birch spear at, at home plate along the line there. <laughs> Um, Dusty Baker had me in a chokehold. He's managing the Cubs to get me off the pile. Uh, wow. You know, the, we had some good ones. Padres, Chris Young, and Derek Lee going at each other. That was a good one. Um, yeah, it's, th- those are adrenaline rushes, man. Like Everybody's like, oh, I know exactly what I do. I'm like, all everything goes out the window the minute something like that happens. You're just you're just trying your best to calm the fight down. That's all I'm trying to do. Yeah, it's bedlam, man. That, those fights break out. I always find it hilarious when they've got the camera out in the bullpen. And the guy's like, all right, we got to go down the stairs and open the door. Let's go. And are we, are we sprinting? Is it a jog? <laughs> like, how are we, what are we doing here? Um, that's if always I could different. Change one thing, if I could change one thing about the game of baseball is that if there's any kind of brawl in the field, you cannot, it's a 50 game suspension. If you leave the bullpen, Why? Really? where, yeah. When, when is there like, has there ever been in the history of the game, a fight break out on the field? And everybody, and then afterwards when they interview the players, the players go, man, things were super crazy until the bullpen came and saved it all. <laughs> they calmed it all down. Right. Never. It only escalates. Stay in the bullpen. Oh, I'll give you one other option. You can hop the wall and fight the other bullpen. That's that's, really what I like that. That, that could really spice They're actually in cages. It's like cage matches. Just, you know, we'll come into your bullpen and fight you in your cage. Yeah, or do some line dancing or something, whatever. And yeah, that's good. Half the fight is anyway. I like that idea with uh, Ryan Dempster. So Jose Bautista is going into the level of excellence. Um, you know, your 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 career, his career would have overlapped. He he must have been a pretty terrifying guy to go up against. Well, you know, I twofold, right? So like, I faced um, Joey a lot when he was with the Pirates, mm-hmm. and you know, being dead honest, like. Yeah, I mean, you know, he hit some home runs when he was there, but there was never a fear factor. Like, I wasn't scared that I was going to get bridged by Jose Batista. Um, and then he went to Toronto. And, the, you know, like, you knew if you got ahead in the count, but he also had the ability to go the other way. You're like, okay, make a good pitch. 
And then he just changed his swing. Good for him for evolving. You know, like if you look at his swing early years with the Pirates and then what he did in Toronto, I don't know if it was the hitting coach he got with there or the offseason or whatever, he just completely changed. He coiled up on there and, and became one of the most feared home run hitters in the league. And, that, and you know, kudos to him. A lot of people get stuck in their ways or, hey, it'll figure out the pro- trust the process. He's like, no, I got more in me. Um, I, I'm strong enough to be doing this, and the ball's not going out. And he did, and he turned himself into elite, you know, six-time all-star and the premier home runner hitter in the game for a while. So we started this show, Ryan, with the with a, my good uh, host here, Brian Hayes, going on a bit of a rant about the the silliness of what's happening in Toronto with Jose Batista signing a one day contract to retire with the Blue Jays. It's it's ceremonial. He hasn't played in five years, and he's not suiting up on that one day contract, right? So we're, we're kind of laughing at that. But I was looking back at you signed with the Cubs to retire with the Cubs, right? What, what was, what went on there and how do you justify that uh, ceremonial act? Yeah. Well, I, I think it's just like a, a way to just put a cap on something. And like, I, I'm really, who, who was the person who was fired up about that? Hey, he's here. well, I, I look to be fair. I've been saying this forever and now I have to be consistent with it being in Toronto. I just, I've never understood what that, what that means. What, what like you, Batista retired five years ago. So what does the one day contract represent? I guess it's yeah, I, I've never really understood it and and the reasoning yeah. behind it. I, I I understand that. I think as players, you know, there's there's a lot of emotional ties to a place when we when you play there for a while, and especially the impact that he had. You know, as a Blue Jay, he played ten seasons there. You know, and like I mentioned, was a stud for so many of those years. Mm-hmm. Um, MVP candidate. I think it's just a way to just kind of bring it all back full circle. And it's just a piece of paper, but you get that piece of paper. And then the same day you retire, I did the same thing. I, you know, sign the contract and sign my retirement papers on the same day. So it's like, you're kind of just saying, Hey, you know, uh, I'm, I'm uh, he, for him. He probably looks at it. Like he played in other places, Pittsburgh, Kansas city, you know, Baltimore, he's a Toronto blue Jay. And for him, it's just a way to say, it solidifies that. And, you know, we, as athletes, we have emotions behind everything, and a lot of that too is nostalgia and and gratefulness for where we played, and and that probably just has that little bit of meaning. At least for me, it did. You know, that's how it felt. With uh, Ryan Dempster, so Alec Manoa has been sent down to the minors. Um, that's his second stint. The first time he went down to the Florida Complex League, which was simply a, a rehab stint, effectively without injury, but it was we got to get him out of here, get him out of here for a month. Then we'll bring him up. They brought him up right before the All-Star break. He pitched pretty well in Detroit. Since then, it hasn't been great. His numbers are bloated. He's got a minus wins above replacement. And and now they're they're setting him down. And and I'm curious, you know, what what this chapter means for him. And, you know, from your perspective, longtime pitcher yourself, you're well aware of the story of Manoa. You're well aware of what the expectation was. Um, what do you make of this decision by the Jays? And, and what do you think Manoa's thinking about this today? Yeah. Hey, listen, man. This game is humbling. It is hard. It is there is a reason that not a lot of people have careers in the major leagues. We like to think that they do, right? Like we find guys and we're like, oh, he must have a good career. And you're like, oh, he played five years. Oh, he played four years. Like they might they might play for a little while, but like to have some longevity in this game, you're going to have to overcome. You have to overcome injury. You're going to have to overcome. You know. Uh, tough times as a team where you're on a losing team and you just, you lose even when you pitch well or you play well or whatever it is, you're going to have to, you know, overcome adversity and then you're going to have to overcome failure and figure out what it is that truly and have honest conversations with yourself in the mirror. You know, am I healthy? Could I be doing things to make myself better physically? Could I be doing things better to make myself better mentally? Could I be, you know, changing your routine? What can I do? It's all part of the process. And, like, you know, not every season goes – like, that's, some, that, that's where I think as a player, an ex-player sometimes, and now, you know, doing broadcasting and doing analyst work is we're so jump quick to jump at a guy and go, this guy's the next Cy Young or this guy's the next – whoa, 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 whoa. Game moves fast. Players get scouted. Teams start to expose things. Maybe something comes up short. Your stuff dips a little bit. Like I talked about his growth in innings and all the innings he threw last year. I think it had an effect on this year. And like, that's just a reality. It's not a, it's not a right or wrong. It's just what happens. And 
Um, and then you have to figure out a way to get through those things. And one thing about him is he's a fighter. He's, he's a positive person, and he's going to figure out a way to get through it, or he won't. But it's not on anybody else other than us as the individuals. We can have people around us that are going to care for us and do those things, and you just go down there and continue to fight, scrap, claw your way back to the big leagues, and hopefully you're helping the Blue Jays out in September. You think the, the pitch clock had an effect on him, Ryan? There, there's been talk about certain guys, and I know – you know, he Manoa was a guy who liked to go behind the mound and take a deep breath and rub up the ball and, you know, do all that stuff that they're trying to get out of the game with the pitch clock. Do you, I mean, have you observed guys who've struggled particularly with, with the new timing that's been enforced on them by the pitch clock? Um, yeah, I, I think I think there is an adjustment period for some guys, and some guys probably have struggled with it, and some guys haven't. I don't know if that's something in particular that – he has had troubles with. I don't know if he's admitted to that. You know, it's like, you know, you don't be afraid to be vulnerable and say, yeah, I really struggle with this and I got to figure out a way to get better with it. If, if that's the case, I don't know. Um, a lot of different things, you know, just maybe all of a sudden, you know, stuff wise, right. Okay. So velocity is still the same on, on average, right? Like I think it's gone down as far as top velocity a little bit with him, but as far as average, it's not way different. But what happens is, is when we have fatigue and then we get underneath the baseball and then we don't have the crispness that we normally have, um, the ball, the slider doesn't bite as much. It kind of sweeps a little bit or it floats in there instead of having that bite because, you know, we're, we're feeling strong and we're feeling healthy. Um, so, yeah, it's just figuring it all out. And we can't sit here and say this guy is going to, you know, he finished in the top three in Cy Young, he's a candidate, and then the next year when he struggles, be like, well, then he's washed up. No, 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 that's not fair. Ups and downs. Look at it throughout the course of history, and like guys, very few guys come in and start in the rotation and dominate all their way through. Guys go through ups and downs. They have great years. You never hear of them again. Guys have great years, struggle, and then they come back, and then they have long careers in the big leagues. And I think Alex, one of those guys that can do that. With Ryan Dempster, well, two examples are in this Jays rotation right now: Jose Bar- uh, Barrios and Yusei Kikuchi, who last year, you know, we're we're getting run out of town and and their statistics you know deserved a lot of the criticism I mean they they go out and pitch and it was really pitching poorly um Brio's been outstanding this year he's been great at home I just saw a stat he's got a 272 ERA and 10 home starts this year and he's on the mound tonight and Kikuchi his last time out in Cleveland was outstanding he's been great he's got like a 350 ERA like it's it's gotten to the point here Ryan where the, the Manoa story is is a dark one. It's a depressing one. It sucks for him, and, and the high hopes were, were there. It just hasn't followed through. But it hasn't been as big of an issue because Gosman's been great. Bassett's been great. And now you got Barrios and Kikuchi completely redeeming themselves. they still got a pretty good rotation here, one through four. No, and that that's exactly the way to look at it. Like, we all want a rotation that's going to be five starters and make 30 starts a year, but it just doesn't happen. Like, mm. And all to be good, like, A, to make 30 starts a year, you got to be good. you got to pitch well. Um, you know, I think the last team to do that was, like, the 01 Mariners. It's been over 20 years since the team's done that. So, you know, and then you have these ups and downs, the ebbs and flows of careers. And, you know, you're exactly, you know, nail on the head. Barrios, remember, everybody's ready to run him out of town. And what's wrong with this kid? He, he's just getting ruts. And then it becomes mental. And then, you know, you go out there and, you know, the bad play happens or a play doesn't get made. And then, oh, now three runs. And then I'm grinding it, and you constantly feel it. And sometimes it just, something clicks. Maybe it's a different, another pitch. Maybe you add, change a pitch repertoire up or, um, you, you know, you change things. I mean, always adapt. If you adapt in this game, you will survive. But if you try to just butt your head against the wall and be like, no, no, this worked last year. Cool, man. That's on channel 252. It's the history channel. It's over with. What's working <laughs> You know, like, yep. and look at, you mentioned Kevin Gossman. Look at his numbers in Baltimore. I mean, you know, he had some decent years, serviceable, not bad, then struggled. Like, even when he went over to Atlanta, then he struggled mightily in Atlanta. Goes to all of a sudden San Francisco, and then that split, and it just starts clicking. And now he's one of the more dominant starters in the big leagues. So careers are up and down, and they, they have not flow like that. And now you're seeing the other side of that with Kikuchi, and you're seeing the other side of that with Barrios. You're seeing guys who continue to fight their way through that, and now they're integral parts of a rotation that's competing to go out there and make the playoffs, and, and they're a big reason why. So, yeah, it, it, not a doubt in my mind that, you know, that's just how rotations work. And and sometimes it's one guy that struggles and another guy the next year. And then Alec Manoa can come back next year and, and win 15, 18 games 
and it could be somebody else that struggles. That's just how it goes. Always great catching up with you, Ryan. We really appreciate it. Thank you for doing this. Yeah, absolutely. And congratulations, too, to Joey Bats, man. That's that's pretty cool to be uh, to be with those people on that ring of excellence. So yep. congratulations. You had a great run here. Thank you, Ryan. All right, guys. Take care. This is Ryan Dempster, uh, former MLB pitcher, intentional talk host on MLB Network. Interesting, even like he said about Bautista, when Bautista was in pit, He's probably in Chicago. He's like, this guy didn't scare anybody. Another guy. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, he gets up here, he unlocks something. And as he said, he changed something. Yeah. And he had, you have to adapt in sports and in baseball. You've got to adapt. And he did. And then all of a sudden, he became a terrifying figure at the plate. Amazing. Yeah. Like, the story of Bautista is a wild one. It's a crazy story. It really is. It really is. Yeah. Like, he unlocked it at 29. And... Doesn't happen much, man. No. Yeah. Doesn't happen much. But... Uh... You know, I know Steve Phillips is saying, yeah, you, like Vladdy being 24 and struggling this year. I mean, you know, he's what he's got nine, 18 home runs. Yeah, he's going to hit like 25 home runs, yeah. give or take. It's underwhelming, maybe a little more. right? We, 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 he set the bar higher. Yes, but I don't know. Like, is there is? I understand that there's guys who've unlocked it at 29, but it's it's maybe it's different when you're always searching for it, right? Jose Batista was searching for it to survive, mm -hmm. whereas. Vladdy Grove Jr. ain't worried about survival. No, Vladdy's going to be fine. Yeah. But um, you're right. At times, you can become a, a prisoner to that great season and the success that comes with it. Right. Right? Like, with Vladdy, he had 48 home runs. Does that mean he's a 40-home a run guy? No. It, you know, he did it once. You know, we used to talk about this with Ferraro all the time. Ray, Ray scored 40 once in his career. He's like, I, I'm not a 40-goal scorer. But he was. I, I did it once. Yep. But but usually I'm like around 25. Right. Like that's on average, I'm a 25-goal scorer. But I did get hot and score right. 40 once. But it's like you do it once. Like Matthews is a 60-goal scorer. But he's not going to – he may never score 60 again. Well, he's averaged 50. I yeah. Mean, if you look at his you know, sure. per-game average. That's not 60. No. Like average this year, 50. he yes, he had some ups and downs with injuries, but he played a fair amount of games. He scored 41, I think. Yeah. In the regular you know? season, he's a, he's averaged 50 goals. Yeah. So that's not bad. Which I, I'm not downplaying that. No. I'm just using it as an example. Once you hit 60, you're held to that bar. It's like, well, you've done it. Right. So when are you going to do it again? But, but the tricky it's not part not that is, easy. No, it's not, it's not easy at all. No one's suggesting it's easy. But the tricky part of Vladdy is when it comes to paying him. Right? Yes, and that's where, and we've been talking about this for a long time. I know Steve Phillips has talked about this. Like Steve's been saying, if you don't lock these guys up, you're going to lose them in terms of Vladdy and Bo, right? And they're not locking them up anytime soon. And I think a year, another year like this, where you go from 48 with Vladdy to 32 last year to whatever it turns out to be this year, 25. Like, how do you? What are you projecting now? Like, yeah. what do you? You can't give you can't give them that superstar money. If he's gone from 48 to 32 to 25, can you? No, it, he's not playing like a guy you would as, expect to be getting $400 million. No, oh, you got to wait. Yeah. But, but that can be or dangerous. Do you, or do you lock him up at a low point and say, we'll give you a modest sum here, a more modest sum than mm -hmm. we maybe would have projected pay you after 30 you hit, million a year. Yeah. But you got to give us 10 years. Right. You know. Is that the play? No, yeah, it might be. I, then, I mean, or then are you doomed to mediocrity? He's never, you know, I mean. Now, exactly. Now, is he a guy that needs to be motivated? Right. Like with Bichette, they got rid of the arbitration. They just gave him a three-year deal. They've walked him to free agency. Yes. But he's locked up, and you know what the price is, and you know what you're going to get. Like, Bichette is going to be here for at least two more years. But the, the risk is you're going to lose him. They very well could. And he's your best player. And the way he's been playing. It's a bit of a problem like, to me. Yeah, if you want to keep him, if he, can, if he continues at this pace, you're going to have to pay Bichette a lot of money. Yeah. But a couple of years ago, it was Vladdy could push up against 350 or four, and Bo maybe is around 225, 250. Now it's flipped. Now it's possibly flipped. I, mean, I don't know. Like, I don't think Bichette hits for enough power to be up in the like in that 400. Range, yeah. You know, like, it, and contracts are difficult because it comes down to the situation, the player, the team, the market, who's willing to pay it. But you look at Judge, he hits 62 home runs, he gets 40 million a year. Right. And now and, look, and look, now look and now, we're getting nothing. I mean, I mean, Judge's got 19 home runs. Vladdy's got 18. Judge's played 60 something games, and Vladdy's played 113. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying like since he's returned though, he's he's not himself. He's not himself. He that that toe it. is not what it should be. But no, it's just it's it's a tough one for me on Vladdy. Like mm -hmm. I, there's a lot to love, and you understand the potential. You understand he's young, 
There's also a lot that you don't like. Mm -hmm. There's the well, there's, there's, there's inconsistencies and in again the power. There's a lack of focus in in big moments at times. Mm -hmm. As 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 Steve said, I agree with Steve. Like sometimes it seems like he's a prisoner to contact. In a way, he's not like to be a home run hitter. To be a real slugger, you can't be worried about striking out. And yet sometimes it seems like he's trying to put the bat on the ball at the expense of power. Right. Well. I don't know. That's a tough call for it is tough. It's viral, man. It is, it is tough. And that one goes all the way up to ownership. Yeah. Because if you're talking massive money and massive term, that's, that's the owner that's really got to sign off on it and be comfortable. And you've got to pitch the owner on why you believe it's the right move. Like we, again, had Anthopolis on yesterday, and we were detailing that Bautista contract he signed after the 2010 season. Yeah. And, you know, for, for reference purposes, he was like, listen, we, we paid him a big contract. It turned out to be incredibly valuable for the team. It was great. Because there are statistics out there, like there's wins above replacement. I think there's like production above contract value. Yeah. Some sort of statistic where they put a number on what you should have been paid based on what you did. And they paid Bautista $65 million for those five years. And the last time I saw it was something like it should have been $140 million or something crazy. Right, which is why that fateful day in spring training in 2016, he came in and said, I, I know what I'm number. worth. Yeah, I got the numbers yeah. here, and I know exactly what I'm worth. But at the time, it was a gamble for Anthopolis because yeah. Bautista had done it once, and he was 29 years old. Right. And, you know, he, he ran through a couple of other guys who had signed as true free agents. He mentioned Albert Bell had signed as a true free agent for like $15 million a year. And they gave Bautista about the same. Yeah. Um, so it was less of a track record. Less of a track record. Yeah. And it, it obviously it played out beautifully for the Jays. But the point being is even after a guy hit 54, you had to you, go all the way up the chain and you really had to pitch ownership on why you're doing this. Yeah. Because Alex was like, they were not sure this is a sound investment. That's a lot of money. Well, and there was a lot of evidence that, you know, Jose Batista was just another guy until he hit 54. Yeah. Well, and the last time they probably handed out a deal like that would have been Vernon Wells, that yeah. famous $126 million dollar deal. AP Rashardi. And it didn't work out. I did, yeah. Like his best days were prior to him signing that deal. It's risky stuff, man. Yeah. Like that's that's what comes with the salary, with with no salary cap is it can go anywhere. Right. Right. And with no term limit, it can you can give a guy 10, 12, 13 years. That's exactly it. Like, what are you going to get? Yeah, it's a gamble for sure. Uh, best bets brought to you by FanDuel a little bit later in the hour. Jays Cubs tonight. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Mail it in Fridays brought to you by Boston Pizza. Weekends are better with fish bowls and frosty pints on the BP patio. Grab your sunscreen. Let's have a weekend. See you on the BP patio. Yes, we always mention this, right? When the Jays are oh, playing, yeah. you got that BP patio down on front. Love it. Boston Pizza's rocking. I'll bet you it's absolutely packed right now. People flooring it. Beautiful night. It's a beautiful night. It's supposed to be a great weekend. Yeah. Yeah. You got to take advantage. Got to get it while you can, man. <laughs> I, it's I, been a little chillier this year. I noticed it's like in the mornings. I had the conversation with my daughter this morning because um, I was dropping her off at camp, and, and I – we were, I don't know how we got talking about the weather. and I was giving her the whole four-season spiel. I'm like, we live in a country where, you know, we're about a month away, month and a half away from it being possibly like six degrees in the yeah. morning. Yeah. You know, like it'll warm up in the afternoon. It might peak at 20 or 21. But, like, frost delays are like a month and a half. They're coming, man. <laughs> like two months. And we're three, four months, five months away from a very different world outside. But uh, that's the beauty of, of Canada, I think. There, oh, there's, yeah, my, there's my it's little the spiel. Beauty, but Mr. Canada here. It's also the ugly of Canada. Yes. Oh, the winters are, I, it's just sickening. It is. But that's why you got to be a glass half full guy. Yeah. Take advantage of a weekend like this. You can't let these weekends Beautiful. pass, man. You got yeah. to take advantage. Yeah. And uh, it'll be cool tonight down at the park. And again, Bautista here tomorrow. And we've been talking a, a lot about it. You know, yeah. today and leading up to it, and you like the, you know, we're talking about the the statues, the level of excellence, the retired numbers. I'm kind of, I I don't really understand what the Blue Jays are doing because they've got they got seven players now in the level of excellence. They got they had two they retired had, numbers, right? And Alomar, um, Alomar. Now they're using number twelve again. You know, we don't need to go into that, right? But the only retired number, I mean, Jackie Robinson retired throughout baseball to mm -hmm. grade forty two, is Halliday's thirty. Thirty two, yeah, but. I don't know. Like, what's wrong with retiring numbers? 
Like, yeah, I don't really understand why you're saying we got to have this level of excellence. I don't know. I, I guess like, the I level like of, retiring numbers. Yeah, I I do think um, I agree with you that it lands more. Like the level of excellence, it's just up there. Yeah. Right. Like it's just if you're down at the park, you can see the names, um, you know, up on the wall or. And I guess it's more inclusive because it allows for Cito to be up there and for Gillick to be up there and Paul Tom Beast Cheek and, and Paul Beast. Cheek and, as you said, probably Jerry Howard. I think Howard yeah. probably goes up there at some point. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, I, I, I agree with you that, like, the retirement of a number is, in my opinion, the ultimate sign of respect. Yeah. And Although... The you, bronze statue is pretty. The statue good. goes a long way, <laughs> but I have I listen. I'm okay with a statue, but I I am I am a very tough marker. Like the statue is almost a, a different. It's level. another level. It's a completely different level. And, and 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 for me, and we've had these conversations before. It it should be there's there's maybe like 20, 30 athletes in North American sports history that, in my opinion, would be statue worthy. Not Dustin Brown. Dustin Brown probably not a part of that <laughs> list. And again, I don't think there's one in, in Toronto sports history that, that stands out. Like, I don't think anyone would represent statue-worthy status. Um, but the retirement of numbers, like the Leafs never retired numbers. They honored their numbers. Right, and then was Shanahan, controversial. The players didn't like that. Right, and it was one of the first things Shanahan really did was when he, you know, he, he tried to change the relationship with the alumni. Yep. That went back really to the Ballard era. That was really the, the beginning of changing the alumni's history, bringing Keon back into it. He was kind mm -hmm. of the face of that. Uh, Legends Row, and then, as you can recall, it was a surprise to many. They the opening night uh, must have been what six, seven years ago now. Yeah, where um, they retired numbers, and like JVR was wearing twenty one, he was wearing Solomon's number, right? And he had to change. It. I think he moved to twenty five. I think it was. Um, but the, the thing is about the retirement of numbers is it is you are caught up in the moment. Like if this sport still exists in five hundred years, a thousand years from now. What are you like? Are you going to run out of numbers? Well, the Yankees. What are you, you yeah, going to do? Like the Yankees, Yankees in the half, like twenty four retired. I think the Celtics. We got twenty five. Yeah. yeah, like you're running out of numbers. At some point, you're going to yeah. run out of numbers, right? Right. Like, like I, I don't know. We'll judge. Will ninety nine be retired? Probably in New York. Probably. Yeah, probably. Um, you know, I can't think of any other. Like Cole's not going to be there long enough. Stanton, no. Um, yeah, well, if they win World Series, yeah, I guess I guess not, if you win multiple not on World track Series, right now, that's for sure. Yeah, I guess that's that's possible. As for you know, Montreal's retired a lot of numbers, yeah, a lot of numbers, but the Habs, I don't think have anyone currently that would be you know trending in that direction. But um, why are you suggesting you think nineteen should be retired? Do you think? Oh, no, I just is, like, like I just I just I think it's I don't I've never loved it. I've never loved the level of excellence. I, I think I don't I think, think there's a connection. I'd rather it. see the number. Yeah, I'd rather see the number retired. I really yes. would. Yeah, I, I think that like the connection to the level of excellence is, is not there to the same extent. Like they tried to sort of like I know other teams have done it, but they in the you know I like they just try to do their own thing. I understand everybody wants to do their sure. own thing and build their own tradition, but I just don't like this tradition compared well, to the other tradition. And the fact they did make exceptions to the rule because they retired twelve. They right. retired Alomar's number, and they retired 32 for Halliday. Which I guess is their way of saying there is a tier here. There's there's a higher tier. So I guess that uh, yeah, maybe that is what they're suggesting. Yeah. But, you know, what does that say for, like, if you're Tony Fernandez and you're up there, like, why was my number not right. retired? Or, you know, Joe Carter Joe could Carter. make a case for 29 right. being retired. Um, Dave Steve, I'm sure, would say, okay, wait a minute. Sure. Like, you know, George Bell might sit there and say, eh, yeah, that was pretty good there in the 80s. Damn well. You know, yeah, for sure. But um, no, I think there's like, yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's, it's great. I think you're right. Like the statue should be reserved. Like when you start doing what the LA Kings are doing and no, no disrespect to Dustin Brown, it's, he's taking a lot of heat for this. It wasn't his decision. It's not his decision. And I understand, look, you were the captain of Stanley. They won two teams. cups. He was I the mean, guy that. There's, there's nothing to sneeze at, except you were the captain of two cup teams, but you weren't a great player. <laughs> no, it was Kopitar's yeah. team, Dowdy's team, Quick's right. team. Right. That's it's a bit misplaced. It's like yeah. it's it's like it's like a company that doesn't understand hockey. Hmm. I wonder if that could be a, a factor here. I, I think that might be a part of like he played his whole career there. He's right. an American. Right. Uh and I'm guessing that that kind of factored in, but you're right. If the door's open for that, then Dowdy and Kopitar have to get a statue, don't they? Right. 
Like you would think, because they both apply as well. They've only known the Kings, drafted, developed, played. They were the best players. They were on better players teams. than the captain that's getting the statue. Yeah. I don't know. Are they ex- like, if you're Dowdy, are you thinking I'm getting a statue now? Or are you thinking because all the blowback, Brown's kind of ruined it for me because now I'm never getting a statue. Right. Because now the Kings are going to be like, fine, screw all you guys. It's, We're not giving anyone It's kind of laughable. Like, it, it makes the Kings look bad. Well, have you seen the conversations revolving around LeBron where it, I think, does he already have a statue in Cleveland? He might. Not that I've seen. Uh, okay, so maybe I, I, I thought could be I, wrong. I thought I recalled them unveiling a statue in Cleveland. Maybe not. He's going to get one, though, I think. Which I is that actually it. amazing after he left. The way he left and how much they hated him. Yeah. But there, I've seen people argue that he deserves one in Miami and deserves one in L.A. Okay. And I just, like in Miami, I would think Dwayne Wade is statue worthy. Close to it. Again, I, I'm, a, I'm a tough marker here, but D. Wade was Mr. Yeah. Heat. And he was... As good as you know, Shaq was and others on that 06 team, that was Wade's team. Oh, he without quite, he was the best player in the NBA he was that run. And then obviously he went to four straight and he won two. And yes, he was riding shotgun with LeBron at that point, but he was still a, a great, great player. But um, I don't know, LeBron getting a statue in in, in multiple locations. Yeah, mm. that doesn't seem. Yeah, I mean, like the Lakers, like. They've got. I've been. I've been outside the. It's beautiful outside the. Uh, yes, they call well, it now. Not, Crypto.com, uh, crypto. formerly com. known as the Staples Center. Like they've got Kareem out there, and they've got Shaq. Duncan. Magic. They're beautiful statues. Kobe. Kobe. I think there's. I think you're. I think yeah. Kobe for sure. No, has Kobe got a statue? Yet? I thought they. Yeah, put they one just up unveiled that, right? Yeah. I thought they did. Yeah. You lose track, but like he's getting like, one if he doesn't. The have Lakers one. have a pretty established multiple titles. Right. You know, not one title. In a Disney bubble. In a bubble. bubble. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's, LeBron's quite there yet. No, that's the thing. Like, I, I can't speak as as a as a native of L.A., someone who lives there, and I'm not a Laker fan. So, I, I, like, I, I can't give you a true sense of the feeling out there. But I, I I just I can't buy into this idea that LeBron's one of the all-time great Lakers. Like, no. there's just no way. Like, he's he's nowhere close to Kobe, Magic, Kareem. No, like no one at Jerry close. West. Like there's a yeah. West has got one. They also got one for Elgin Baylor, which is way before our yeah. time. But Baylor was a great, great, he's a player. great player. Great obviously, Laker. you know, the, a lot of people say that Tom play the precursor to Michael Jordan in a lot right. of ways, um, in terms of athleticism and and and, uh, and sort of relentlessness. But yeah, there's no way LeBron James fits into that group as a Laker. No, as a Laker, as exactly. A Laker. As an all-time great player, of course, you can have that conversation all day. And, and that's part but, of it too, like. It, it like as much as look, I give, I give Kawhi my number one spot on my level of excellence, because he did something no Raptors ever done, mm-hmm. which is steer the team to the desired destination. Right. Bring it home. Get the Larry O'Brien. Get the Finals MVP trophy. End of story. Right. It's unprecedented. And guess what? We're going to be waiting a long time until we see the next one. Probably, true. probably. I mean, yeah. Look, no, like, like, I mean, as of right now, they're not crazy close. things happen. They they could get closer fast. The NBA is fun that way, but but it also does matter that you know you, you didn't stay in like in a town where guys have won multiple championships, yeah. staying there for their uh, most of their career, right? Or certainly most of their prime. You're in a different class. Exactly. Like every team has a different history and a different bar and a different standard, right? And that's the truth. The Raptors are not the equivalent of what the Lakers are. You can't compare. You can't. And and like the one championship is everything. It is. And with the Lakers, you know, they've won a lot of titles. They've won a, they've won so many titles. And every great player that's been the face of the Lakers has won multiple titles. That's the thing. So they've had dynastic th- eras. Exactly. So that I mean that was always going to be difficult and it was always going to be built in for LeBron, but yeah, that's the truth. Like every every team has got a different Set of standards. You see it yeah. all the time with different guys who are saluted, different guys who who get their number retired or, you know, get up on the equivalent of a level of excellence. Well, if it's if it's the the Charlotte Hornets, what's the bar? That's you know, it. Like if it's if That's it's it. a team that has no history of winning or success or national Couple identity. Good playoff runs. Yeah, it's like there's no statue. Yeah, you're the best player in that yeah. town. It's like okay, it's nothing again. It, fine, good for you, but. You can't compare it to the greats of the the iconic brands, you know, of pro sports. By the way, to your point about Kobe, no statue yet, but a okay. plan for 2024. Apparently. Coming, okay. 
Yes. Has to be. That was inevitable. Yeah, I'd that said was, that. We knew that was Yeah, that, Kobe was always going to be statue worthy out there. But that, I mean, that speaks to the greatness of the Lakers. Like, even with what I'm saying about the Lakers, like Kobe, Magic, Kareem, like, no doubt statue worthy guys. Yeah. Like, no doubt statue worthy guys. And that's how lucky it is. You know, if you've been a long time Laker fan, you've just, you're constantly in the running, you know? Like the the the, the career of, of Pau Gasol would be yeah. an all time great it's in a like great career. Fifteen other teams. Yeah. Just retired his number. Yes. But they got that tier. I like the tier. Yeah, it's See, like you like get the, a number. You were great, you Pau. You were the number two on a couple of championship right. teams. We loved you. But you're not Kobe. No. And you're not Magic and you're not Kareem. You're no, not it's Jerry West. You're not no, both. But I, but anyway, my thing would be the level of excellence is sort of the, the I think it's kind of the. It's like they're trying the to hedge bets, level. and yes, it's the of all the honors that we've seen. I guess maybe well, bobblehead night. <laughs> yeah, I guess bobblehead <laughs> like a, night might be number one. Okay, yeah. you get a bobblehead night. You're retired. That could be Congratulations. One. Yeah, but then like level of excellence is right up there with kind of like it's not that great. It's well, like it, it also again because it, it includes non-players. Right. I wonder how play like. I'm sure Bautista is, I'm sure, very honored and should be. It still yeah, is an exclusive it's still a great club. Night. Yeah. It's an exclusive club. They're, they're not, they don't hand this out to anybody, but you're up there with broadcasters and team presidents right. where they're, only the players can get a number retired. That's the thing. Like only, even non players can get a statue, <laughs> but I only mean, players can get a number retired. I do think the ratio is kind of interesting, too. Like the fact that there's 11 people on it now with Bautista joining. And four of them aren't even players. Like, yeah, you know, it's like, yeah. yeah. It's, you know, Cito, Beast, and Tom Cheek, and Pat Gillick. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, fair enough. Hey, they're all great. They were great members of the Blue Jay community. Right. Without question. And revered. Right. And, we also know who makes the decisions on these things. Yeah. They tend to be the guys wearing the suits. They sometimes can yeah. be. Yeah. Yes. TSN 1050 once again delivering backpacks filled with school supplies to support local families. It's all part of our ninth annual, ba- uh, annual Back to School Backpacks event happening Wednesday, August 23rd. This year's event is presented by Healthy Planet. Together, in partnership with the Children's Breakfast Club's 1,010 young students will receive the tools they need to succeed before the school bell rings in September. For all the details, head to tsn1050.ca. Head to tsn1050.ca. We'll get to our best bets brought to you by FanDuel. Wrap up a busy week. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. Mail it in Friday is brought to you by Boston Pizza. Weekends are better with fish bowls and frosty pints on the BP patio. Grab your sunscreen. Let's have a weekend. See you on the BP patio. Beautiful night tonight. Jays Cubs. You got the uh, FedEx playoffs. How about Lucas Glover just on fire? Wow. Wins a tournament. Like, he's won five times on I tour. know. That shocked me. It is shocking. Like. Not famous at all. Not at all. <laughs> like, really. Five-time winner. That's yeah. huge. And just kind of hangs around, gets hot when he needs to, and then keeps his card, I guess. Doing, He's doing great. Pretty good living. A little better than keeping his card right now. I guess so, man. man. He's leading right now. Wow. Right? He's leading, and that means he's going to, uh, he'll be in Hawaii. He'll be yep. playing Kapalua next year. Like, yeah. I love that tournament. Oh, it's so much fun. Kapalua is the coolest course to watch on TV. Outside of Augusta, it's like the coolest course. Um, and it's January. It's You're so far away from golf. So nice. Kind of depressing, actually, to watch that tournament. Uh, today's best bets powered by FanDuel. Make your picks and assemble a same-game parlay in seconds on the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Get a little Jays parlay tonight under the number tonight. Nine runs, okay. Jays, Cubs. Um, the bats, I mean, we just saw it in Cleveland. Yes. And Barrios is on the mound. He's been outstanding at home. I like Barrios five-plus strikeouts tonight. That's an alternate strike prop tonight. I like him to go off. And I like George Springer after getting tossed to record at least a hit tonight. So under the number in terms of run scored tonight, George Springer records at least a hit. Jose Barrios plus or five plus alternate strikeouts tonight. That parlay going off at plus 207 on FanDuel. Pretty good. Hey, Pretty Phil good. Mickelson will, uh, is in for 150 grand. He will He will absolutely lay it on the Count line. Count him in. He will. Phil, if there's something available, Phil will take advantage. Today's best bets are powered by FanDuel. Bet on star players to score, assist, or have a shot on goal in a soccer same-game parlay. Please play responsibly. Must be 19-plus and physically located in Ontario. All right. Well, it's been a fun one today. A little level of excellence. A lot of people are responding. Oh, yeah. 
And and listen, I understand it from different fan bases. I thought long and hard about putting Ricky Ray on there. And Jovinko was the guy that came to mind for me. Jovinko and out the door. Yeah. Like for TFC, like they, they won, right? You were you're you were big on winning. They did win MLS Cup. Yeah. I, I wanted to put him on there, but there's only five spots. That's the thing. Like if we went ten deep, twelve, fifteen, like you and you really could. If you started to think about the Donaldsons and the Marners and uh the Jovinkos and the Altadors and the the Ricky Rays and you know, you, you could look at a number of different guys and say, Wow, that guy had a he had a big impact on what was going on in Toronto since and the my, year two thousand. And my thing was like I was giving guys like I gave Cujo that honor because like there was just that run, like where yeah. he, he he was like four and one in an elimination game. He's the man. We forget like, about that. Yeah, yeah we do. And he was carrying him. And I'll take one of those runs. In this town, we're so starved for a championship team. I'll give that's why I gave Kawhi my top spot because he won it. He brought it home, man. He delivered. He did. And and Kuja was, you know, he was he was giving them reason to believe that they could get there. Yeah. Those late nineties, early two thousand leaves, though, they were so easy to like. Yeah. Like they because they, they were tough as nails. Well, Gary Roberts was in my conversation for that because yep. when you talk about a primetime player who showed he was up when it mattered. Yep. Man, He's, that guy made plays when it mattered. Unreal. Like they had so many injuries in 02 and they still got to yeah. game six of a conference about final. That. Yeah, it was a great, great Didn't run. score a goal, but they got the game six. Yeah, they were a fun team. They really were. All right, Dave. Great seeing you, man. Great seeing you. Have a great weekend. There he is, Dave Festchuk of the Toronto Star. Thank you to everyone behind the scenes. We appreciate it. Thank you for tuning in today. Radio, TV, podcast, web. We appreciate that. We're out of here. Enjoy your evenings. Enjoy your weekends. We'll be back Monday at 4 p.m. We'll chat then.